Dude, don't lie. I literally said that in an interview earlier. That's the original sauce right the, there. So, yo, that is the but Guitar Rig on a lead? It's like, yo, it's a wrap. Me. I didn't know you did that. That's of course, like, so far gone times. That's far. My name is T Minus, and I'm a record producer. I've done records for Drake, J. Cole, Kendrick, Nicki Minaj. My first breakthrough hit was definitely How Low Can You Go by Ludacris. I produced that song back in 2010, 2009. That was pretty much my intro into the game. The second record that came about six months later was Moment for Life by Nicki Minaj and it was featuring Drake. When I made that beat, I had no artist of mine. Matter of fact, I was actually thinking it was going to be for like a pop group, like a Pussycat Dolls or something when I made the beat. I don't know why my mind went there, but it's just, you know, my creative direction ended up going into a whole new direction when the right artist took it. That was definitely, you know, the icing on the cake when it came to my solidification as a producer, because once you can come with another one and it's, and it's a great record and it's different, then you know what I mean? It's boundless from that point. I started streaming on Twitch back in June 2021, and I just wanted to connect with all the sample makers that were out there. There's so much undiscovered talent, and I also just wanted to cook live and show people the process. The best advice that I've gotten recently was from J. Cole, and his whole outlook is, you know, you got to start with the little moments. Just find the little spark, you know what I mean? So. It could be as easy as just a cool little drum pattern. Maybe you don't have the music yet, but if you can get that going, then it might inspire the music. It might inspire the melody. So we're here right now at Revolution Recordings, and I'm about to make a beat with 40's very own and complete now. I gotta hear this. I haven't heard it yet, so this is the first time I'm listening to it. Oh, it sounds crazy. It's like chaotic. I could definitely hear like 40s influence on this. The sounds are very lush and they're very unique. They're all very different. So right now I'm just building a chord progression and then I'm gonna figure out a melody I'm gonna layer on top of it. I get rid of some of that delay so it doesn't fall into the other chords. So right now I'm about to open up Guitar Rig and put it as an effect over top of this sound that I have open right now. See if I can mess with it and pull it around and you know make it sound different. Just adding a filter over top of it. Yeah, I like how it sounds. Gives it that 40 filter vibe. So now I'm going to open up the Battery Now library. I'm going to pull up some of the, the one shots and see if I can find some cool drums to go with it. Maybe I can find an 808 and, and some kicks. I'm trying to find the key right now of the 808 so I can match it with the music. I'm gonna lay down a hi-hat pattern and figure out like a cool bounce. Take it from there. All right, now I'm gonna try and find like a cool snare or like a rim shot, something to fill up some of that space. Oh, I like this percussion sound. I'm gonna pull up ROM right now and add some reverb to this sound right here. Make it less of a percussive sound and more of like a melodic sound. So this sound is called the Perk Ambers 3. It's from the Battery Now kit. And I just pretty much took the sound, I reversed it, added some reverb over top of it, stretched it and made it into a whole different sound in itself. That's what it sounded like before, and now it sounds like this. 
So now I'm going back to looking for the snare that I was trying to find. Usually when I go through sounds, it's always good to have the track playing while you're going through them because if you don't audition your sounds with the music playing already, then you can't really gauge if the sound will sound good with the track. So usually I'll press play and I'll just run through them. I'm gonna go ahead and put a kick down with the 808 and uh, we're gonna see how it sounds. So I got that kick from, from Battery now. It's called Kick Focus 2. So now I'm gonna clone the 40s pad that I just have playing. and I'm gonna try either laying it with another sound or I'm gonna just replace it all together and maybe have that as a section in, its, in itself. So I'm gonna run through the same chord progression that I played, play different sounds that uh, are in this plugin and see if whichever works better. What I did was I just took the lead and I had it shorter, stretched it out, and I'm just trying to figure out the best pocket that I could sit in. Now I'm gonna put some effects on it to kind of make it sound bigger, make it sound wider. So I just added uh, some ROM reverb, kind of had like a, a delaying effect on it, which is really cool. I just added this other one uh, from Byte called Bad Sampling. I raised the bits on it and the kilohertz so it didn't sound too dirty and too crunchy. So, you know, that was just my way of kind of adjusting the sound so you can hear a little cleaner. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up a little bit too maybe even change the key. A lot of times when I'm making a beat, if I get tired of hearing the same thing over and over, changing the key helps me almost readjust the approach and how I listen to it. So when I change the key, it's, it might sound like a whole new beat, a whole new vibe, and it might spark a new idea. So I started at 123 BPM and now I'm going up to 126. Maybe I'll go to 128, we'll see. So I just adjusted the keys on all the melodic instruments. I've dropped everything down about three semitones. It sounds darker, you know, I can hear the space in it. It sounds nice, it sounds really lush. I just love the vibe of this. Now right now, I'm gonna go ahead and open up uh, Glaze, which I really like this plugin. It has a lot of cool vocal samples and stuff like that that you can just pull out and throw in melodies and chop it up. So I want to find a cool melody and, and see if I could stick it to the track. It's actually the first one that popped up. It's called Ghost in the Machine. I just put down the little melody. I like how it feels. I like how it sounds. So I just printed this whole lead into a wave. So now I can manipulate it a little bit more. I added an automation within FL Studio, which allows you to, you know, anything you adjust or press within the program, it will record. So as it's gotten to the end, I dropped the pitch down two octaves. All 
All right, now I'm gonna go through Glaze one more time because I really like some of the uh, pre-recordings that they have. So what I just did was I just threw down this riff that's from Glaze. It's called Air Minor. Super dope, I like this one. It's just one of the sounds that are already built in. I didn't have to play anything. So what I've done too is I've moved the MIDI to the end and then I also pitched it up nine semitones. I could either go down three or go up nine. It sounds a lot better higher. So I'm gonna go through some more and see what I can do. What I liked about that vocal sample is just the melody. I just, I liked how the notes hit. I liked how it hit with the chords. It didn't feel too forced. It kind of worked in the, the magic of the music. Added a little arpeggiation on this key sound from Melted Vibes. It's called Bill to the Drop. I just balance it all the way to the left. So I'm just using Piano 7. I also added a little filter to it. So it's not too present in the highs. All right, now I'm gonna look for some ear candy stuff. Percussive sounds, things I can kind of keep the, the beat moving really cool. Maybe I might check out the Battery Now drums and see if there's anything in there that I can pull out. added this shaker sound. I just thought it was cool in the pocket that it was sitting. And then uh, I added this little kind of like clav sound. It's just to add a little like, you know, pop in the, in the track. And then I added some stuff for the fills at the end. So I like this sound, kind of reminiscent of like a dance hall track or something. You'd hear that. So it's like a tom at the end. And then it's layered with this sound right here. I added some open hats so for the start and for the middle of the track. A little extra hi-hat. And that's all I've added so far for the extra percussion stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and try and arrange it out a certain way and get the original sound that I had at the beginning. I wanna get that back in the intro because I really liked how that felt by itself. So how I have it going right now, it's got this intro in the first eight bars. That's just like, you know, letting the production kind of come in and whoever, wherever the artist wants to, they can, you know, maybe talk on the record right at the beginning and then after those eight bars, it's almost like the second intro. So the way I see it, the artist can definitely jump on and just sing a melody or begin their verse with no drums. Then the drums can come in. So after that whole section, that's essentially the first verse. I wanted to go into this maybe like pre-chorus part where the beat comes down, there's no drums, and then we go into a hook or back into a new verse. Right here at this section, this is where I want the pad to jump out for a bit because it's been going on for so long. It's nice to have a drop out where there's a little bit more space, you know, a little moment of clarity. It would actually be cool to end that section off with what's in the beginning, you know, to kind of bring back what was in the intro and, you know, end the track maybe on that note. <laughs> Brother. Good to see you, man. I've been cooking up to your, your, new, your new plug in, man. It's How terrible is this? Good? Sick, dude. Yeah, you sick. Like yeah. It? I already cooked up a vibe to it. Yeah? Yeah, for sure. For real? You made a beat. You're about to see it.
slightest beats, man. You sound still, still strong in that space, bro. It's so good and sick. Nah, I appreciate it, bro. Makes me smile right away.